Hello and welcome back to Rato Future Hub. I'm glad you're joining today's deep dive into the 2026 version of the UX Next Generation main battle tank, the Challenger 3. Today we'll walk through its development, its features, what it brings to the table for the British Army, and also the cost implications right here in the United Kingdom. Whether you're a defense enthusiast or just curious about what's next in armored warfare, there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. The Challenger 3 is a major step forward for the UX heavy armor capability. Developed by the joint venture Rian Metal Bay Systems Land RBSL, it builds directly on the hulls of the existing Challenger 2 fleet, upgrading them into a fully modernized platform. This approach gives the British Army both continuity and cost efficiency compared with designing an entirely new tank from scratch. So why Challenger 3, and what does 2026 model mean in practice? Essentially, by 2026 we're looking at a vehicle that has been refined through prototype and pre-production trials, already undergoing live firing and mobility tests, and moving toward initial operational capability. For example, in September 2025, it was reported that the mobility trials for Challenger 3 pre-production vehicles had covered around 789 kilometers over varied terrain. The Ministry of Defense also states that final trials are expected to conclude by the end of 2026. That gives us confidence that the 2026 designation isn't just rhetorical. By that year the tank should be nearing full operational readiness in UK service. Let's walk through the key specifications and features that make it stand out. Crew and basic layout, like its predecessor, the Challenger 3 will have a crew of 4, commander, gunner, loader and driver. The hull is derived from the Challenger 2, but the turret is essentially all new. This combination helps keep development risk lower while still delivering substantial capability improvements. Weight and size, the vehicle weighs around 66 tons in core configuration. The new turret, upgraded armor and additions like an active protection system contribute to the increase compared with older tanks, but this remains within manageable heavy armor class limit. Armament, perhaps the most significant change is the main gun, the Challenger 3 moves away from the rifled 120mm L30A1 gun used on earlier British tanks, and adopts the NATO standard 120mm L55A1 smoothbore cannon, this has a number of advantages, compatibility with allied nations ammunition, improved penetration performance, and access to new ammunition types such as programmable high explosive multi-purpose rounds EMP, and enhanced kinetic energy penetrators. Protection and survivability, the tank receives new modular armor, improved hull and turret protection, and the design allows integration of an active protection system APS, for example, the press release by RBSL noted that part of the mobility trials program included evaluation of the turret test rig and preparation for reliability growth trials, implying that protection and survivability was central to the development. Mobility and underpinning systems, the challenges are being upgraded under what is called the Heavy Armor Automotive Improvement Program, HAAIP, this covers improved engine cooling, increased electrical power capacity, upgraded hydrogas suspension, third generation, and other enhancements. One source lists the engine as a Perkins CV 12-9A 26.1 litre V12 diesel delivering around 1200 to 1500 bhp. Communications, sensors and digitization, the Challenger 3 features a digital electronic architecture, open system design, local area networks, improved fire control systems, and sites for both commander and gunner that support. Day and night operations, this digital backbone should help the British Army integrate the platform into wider brigade level and networked operations. Service rollout and numbers, the UK Ministry of Defence plans to upgrade 148 Challenger 2 hulls into the Challenger 3 standard, the contract for this upgrade was signed in May 2021, with a value around £800 million, Initial operating capability is expected in or around 2027, with full operational capability by 2030. Now, when it comes to cost and pricing in the United Kingdom context, here are the key figures. In May 2021 the UK Ministry of Defence awarded the contract to RBSL worth approximately £800 million to upgrade 148 tanks. According to one analysis, if you assume around 20% of that budget is support and non-platform costs, you arrive at a rough unit cost of about £4.3 million per tank. However it is important to recognize that this figure only covers the upgrade contract and not the full, life cycle cost, throughout the vehicle's service life, which the ministry estimates to be far higher. 
For example, estimate of £1.99 billion pounds including the modular armor system and APS. In short, the price of each tank varies depending on what you include, platform cost, ammunition, crew training, logistics, spare parts, but for the base upgrade contract the ballpark is several million pounds per vehicle. So when you hear that each Challenger 3 costs 4.3 million pounds, you should take it with caution, that is a basic figure derived from dividing contract value, not the full in-service cost. What really matters is how that cost compares with capability delivered, readiness, logistics burden and how many vehicles the army can field. Moving on, let's consider the strategic and operational implications. For the British Army, the Challenger 3 represents a significant capability uplift, moving to a smooth ball gun aligns the UK with other NATO heavy armor users, improving interoperability, and arguably providing better common ammunition supply chains and access to the latest rounds. The improved senses, digital architecture, protection and mobility upgrades mean this tank should be far more survivable and lethal than the Challenger 2. One of the other important benefits is industrial, the upgrade work is being done at the RBSL facility in Teeford, UK, creating hundreds of jobs across the UK supply chain. This means the program supports UK defence industry capability and sovereign maintenance. But there are of course caveats and criticisms. One recurring theme in the defence commentary is that while Challenger 3 is technologically strong, the number of tanks is relatively modest. Only 148 units may leave the British Army somewhat constrained if faced with a protracted high-intensity armoured campaign. The combination of advanced features with lower numbers raises questions about force sustainability, attrition resilience and battlefield depth. Another issue is cost escalation and risk. While the contract is within budget as of certain claims, as with any complex defence programme there are supply chain pressures, inflation and technical risk, especially given the advanced digital architecture and integration of new systems. We have seen for example that qualification and trials extend into 2026. For us here in the UK, what does that mean for viewers, civilians, defence watchers? It means the UK is investing in a modern heavy armour fleet that will serve for decades ahead, into the 2030s and beyond. The Challenger 3 will be the backbone of Britain's armoured regiments, replacing the Challenger 2 and ensuring the army remains credible in heavy armour domain. It also signals that the UK is committed to industrial capacity, supply chain sovereignty and defence capability. Not relying entirely on foreign off-the-shelf vehicles but upgrading existing capability domestically. Let me summarise what we've covered and why it matters. The Challenger 3 is the UK's next generation main battle tank, developed by RBSL, upgrading the Challenger 2 hulls into a fully digitised, modern platform. Key capabilities, 120mm smoothbore gun, new turret, modular armor, active protection system, improved mobility, fully digital architecture. Cost, the upgrade contract is around £800 million for 148 tanks, giving roughly £4.3 million per tank in simplistic terms, though full in-service cost is much higher. Service schedule, prototypes and trials through 2024-26, initial operating capability till the 2027, full service by 2030. Strategic value, significant leap in capability, interoperability with NATO forces, industrial benefit to the UK. Caveats, modest number of tanks, 148, life cycle and attrition concerns, complexity and delivery risk inherent in modern defence programmes. In conclusion, the 2026 model of Challenger 3 is not just an incremental upgrade, it's a generational shift in Britain's heavy armour capability. For those interested in defence technology, vehicle architecture, or UK military readiness, this tank is one to watch. As the British Army fields it and puts it into active regiments, we will see how it performs in training, exercises, and potentially in operations. Thank you very much for watching this deep dive on the Challenger 3. If you found the video useful, please do hit the like button, and if you're new here subscribe to Rato Future Hub so you don't miss our future defense tech breakdowns and military capability updates. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, how do you rate the Challenger 3? Is 148 tanks enough? What do you think about the cost versus capability? I'd love to hear your views, until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the future.